Let's dive into a great unknown Rip out the pages, let life unfold Cause darling you can hold on to my heart We can rewrite time, break the hourglass Burn all the rules and scatter the ash But darling you can hold on to my heart Well, I mean, it started obviously in, you know, grade school. My dad um, played and still plays in a cover band that he started in college. So there was always music around the house. And fortunately for me, it was a good cover band. So it was good music. It was, you know, Beatles and Petty and The Birds and just like 60s, 70s kind of stuff. Um, so, like, I grew up listening to cool music, and all I wanted to do was play with my dad's band, you know, I wanted to perform. And I guess when it came time, when I was in high school, I just started writing songs, and there were contemporary bands that I started to see on MTV and VH1, and I was like, oh, this band kind of reminds me of these bands that, that are from the 60s and 70s, but they're, they're in the 90s. And I just loved it. And that was when I really was like, okay, I can do this, you know. Okay, cool. So, who would you say some of like, your biggest musical influences are? Biggest musical influences, number one is Tom Petty, I think. Um, just classic American rock and roll plus songwriting. Um, but, I mean, fortunately, I've just been really lucky because some of the contemporary people that I mentioned that I sort of... Uh, my my teenage years, they were my heroes. Were bands like Counting Crows and Better Than Ezra and The Wallflowers and uh, Oasis. You know, three out of you know four of those people I've become friends with and toured with. So that was a pretty lucky, fortunate break for me to be friends and tour mates with my heroes. Yeah. Well, what, I mean, what is that like to, especially Wild. like be <laughs> in the more beginning stages of your career, be able yeah. to like open for people like that and see yeah. large-scale shows. It was amazing. I mean, especially, you know, when I first got started in 2002, 2003, it was an entirely different time in music, yeah. you know? So bands like that, they could afford, uh, literally, to take um, little bands like me who wouldn't sell a single concert ticket out on tour with them, you know? And it shouldn't happen anymore. I mean, you know, even big, huge bands, you know, they, there's there's an opener and a first of three opener. And it's a very, uh, it's just a hard time in music to, to sell tickets, to sell albums, and to spread the word about stuff. Uh, so I was really fortunate to come out when I did at a time when these, these heritage-type artists that have been doing it for a long time could take a baby band like me out, you know. Um, it gives us cred. Yeah, no. It's real life. This is not, you know. <laughs> you should, like, this is what backstage is. Playing different size venues because obviously you've played a variety of different yeah. places, different sizes, different crowds. Is there some like a certain mindset you have to like and change your mindset for each type of crowd, or do you kind of just play the same show no matter where you are? Um. Well, I mean, I've gotten to the point now where I really enjoy solo acoustic shows just as much as full band shows. I think, you know, I'll get tired of one thing if I do it too much. So those shows are entirely different. Um, and, you know, the acoustic shows, I definitely, I never write a set list. I always just sort of scribble down songs I'm thinking about playing, and it usually never goes in order. Full band is more... You know, you want to put on a show, and you want to keep it more, you want to keep it moving. There's not a lot of dead space in the middle. Yeah. I try not to tell too many stories when I'm with the band, because <laughs> my bandmates would, you know, they don't like that so much. But um, I think the size, to be honest, it doesn't matter. I mean, that sounded really bad, didn't it? The size doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just how you use it. Um, sorry, edit that out. <laughs> Actually, keep 
that in. Keep that in. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, we need to use that. That's good. This has been a magical interview thus far. Um, basically, when you know, from when I first got started, I was really lucky to tour with, you know, like Dave Matthews to Kelly Clarkson, and our show was exactly the same. We didn't cater it to one crowd or one size venue versus the other. And I think that's just, you know, I mean. I mean, I just have always sort of kind of like try to do my thing, and, and if people like it, great. Uh, but it doesn't really change that much from from venue to venue or size to, you know, uh, same show for 100 people is 10,000, you know. Okay. Um, do you have, like, a favorite venue or city to go play? I mean, it always kind of changes. Um, I think my favorite city is New Orleans. I don't know, just something about it. And I think my favorite city to play is probably Chicago. Um, and a lot of it is just, I don't know, I, I, I think with Chicago I've had so many just extremely unique, amazing performances that I could recall on demand, you know, yeah. about just which ones with different artists headlining, and those just stick with you. Um, are there any charities or nonprofits that you're involved with? Yes, glad that you asked. Um, well, my family is uh, has been not only involved but started the Oklahoma AIDS Care Fund. I had a, a family member pass away from AIDS in the late '80s, so that's been an important cause for my family even long before music. So I am involved with that cause. Um, the Oklahoma Food Bank has been something I've been involved in. Uh, and recently, I've um, just because I wrote a song that somehow went out there, and it connected with um, the uh, the autism movement, and that's been something that you know is the coolest thing about writing a song is you never know what's going to happen to it, and when it does something positive like that, and it affects people that are making a difference and such an important cause. I mean, that's, that's I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know. So. It's uh, as as uh, embarrassing as it sounds to say. Well, I wasn't that involved with the autism movement before I wrote this song. It's been an incredible the way. Again, you write something, and now I am, and it's. I'm just kind of like, man, I, I I really think that you know I can help make a difference, and that's that's been really cool. Okay, cool. Um do you say that you've had like a lot of song placement and stuff? So has there been a time when you got a song placed on something and that I don't know you kind of checked off as being one of your favorites? Oh yeah, well I mean yeah, I've been really lucky because I've had a lot of you know songs on TV and stuff like that. Um, I mean having a song on American Idol and Oprah were kind of like two of the ones that were like wow, like that's very very cool just because they're these big, huge things, yeah. but there definitely have been kind of some moments in television shows that really are super appropriate to what was going on in my head when I wrote the song. There was this, um, I mean I could rattle a bunch off, there was this one HBO promo end of the year thing, mm -hmm. and it was just so cool, and the way they took my music and created their own piece of art to it was just really moving. So that's really amazing when that happens, when your song becomes visual, yeah. you know, and it's kind of like, either it completely captures what was going on in my head, or it's something completely different, which is equally pretty cool. It's almost like a music cool. video. It's exactly what it is, yeah. And honestly, you know, some of the fan videos that they've made for my songs, mm -hmm. even like slideshows and pictures and stuff, I mean, that's, that's equally, it's awesome. So cool. Okay, do you have like, I don't know, like a favorite thing that a fan has done for you? Um, food. <laughs> Lots of food, which is great. That's what, that's it. It's good. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> Homemade food on Homemade the road food. is always yeah. good. Um, I don't know, I mean, I guess, what is kind of the plan for the rest of this year after tour, and I guess this year yeah. is almost over after tour and holidays, so I guess going into next right. year, what's the plan? Well, I'm supporting a new I guess I'll call it a side project called Sooner the Sunset. It's a collaboration CD that 
I made with a singer-songwriter from Los Angeles named Lindsay Ray. So, being that I'm always touring all the time, um, I'm promoting that CD right now, even though she's not on tour with me. So, um, that's kind of, I've gotten to the point where it's, I think it's great where we are in music, where you can, there's just so much room to do things like that. Different albums, different kinds of tours, acoustic tours, full band tours. It doesn't have to be go into the studio for a year, release the album, tour for a year, and go back in the studio. You know, it's very kind of like, you can do whatever you want. And so, uh, I think I'm gonna do this run, I think it's 25, 26 cities, maybe. And uh, I'm already sort of, sort of thinking and writing for the, my next album. And in the meantime, hopefully something, I guess hopefully the good will continue with this little side project and all of your viewers will pick it up and add it to their collection. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> um, I don't know, when it comes to playing live, obviously there's like different, with different shows and different setups it can change, but do you have favorite songs for when you have a full band or when it's just you? I mean, Do that again. <laughs> Why don't we want to leave that oh, one yeah. too? Oh yeah, yeah. We, we should leave that one too. <laughs> I felt like the other one was more organic though. That one just made me uncomfortable because it surprised me. Okay, we can do she that came again. out of from the back. <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. Uh, so you asked what my favorite songs were to play with a band versus acoustic. Right. It always changes, always. Um, and the fun thing about like tonight is we were, we're recording all the shows on this tour, mm -hmm. and I'm strategically trying to play different songs different ways so every recording is different and I just think that's the only way to keep it fresh you know and I think the fans appreciate it keeps me sort of I guess kind of sharp if that makes sense you're fine you're, you're in the movie Sorry. no it's all good it's all good it gives us cred she's she, she cares a lot yeah, with the whole like, live recording thing, so it seems that happened a few more times now where artists are doing live recordings yeah. and then if you buy the ticket to the show and right. you get the download a couple days, anywhere from a couple days to a month yeah. afterwards. So why did you decide to do that? Kind of the idea behind well, that? I mean, to be honest, I mean, there's, uh, on a positive note, there's, um, I just think, there's so much opportunity and and it creates a better connection with fans if you offer them not just, hey, here's my new six song or 12 song album every three years. Yeah. So I've just really tried to adopt the principle of like, you know, it's not just about an album and a t-shirt. You know, you've got to create, even for shows, I mean, it's like, it's hard and I really uh, understand that for somebody to, not only like see a show is coming to town, buy the ticket, carve out time on their schedule, pay to park, show up to the gig. I mean, it's, it's a lot, you know? And it seems like nowadays the concert uh, uh, thing and culture is different than when it was 10 years ago. Not as many people are going to shows across the board. So I think you've got to do things that not only provide incentive, but it makes the experience unique. And, you know, if it's just me and a guitar, you know, I can't really bring like crazy uh, pyrotechnics or anything. So I do the. Uh, so this show is basically like every show is going to be recorded and given away for free. So it's almost like you can take the show home and watch it. Yeah, and again, it, I think it for me it keeps it fresh and fun yeah. and interesting, and it makes me want to perform songs differently. And you know, I think that's really kind of what the business is about now. You know. Okay. Um. And then, I don't know, I guess just like when you're on the stage playing, do you have like a favorite moment? Um, honestly, this sounds really cheesy. My favorite moments are the ones that are unplanned. Um, you know, a lot of times when you play live, especially if you play the same set, it gets pretty monotonous. And you end up sometimes, you tell the same story. And I hate that. I hate it. I hate telling the same story. And I try not to. So a lot of times... The moments that I used to be afraid of when I first started, like awkward silences and my guitar's out of tune or something, those have become kind of my favorites because you just sort of, 
I don't know, I've just, I, get, I think I've sort of learned how to embrace my awkwardness a bit more. And I think people, I don't know, I rather than be afraid of those moments, I just sort of like, yeah, this is this is what makes the show interesting and unique. You're too human. The imperfections, yeah. yeah. You don't relate to. Yeah, and I forget words every night, so sometimes those are the best moments. <laughs> and I just sort of be like, yeah, I forgot all that verse. You know, you know it, I know it. Let's just laugh about it, and it becomes a fun thing, you know.